far better. This is a dispute that will always exist, I suspect. But if they had some kind of a protection inside the temple, uh, maybe it could have been a very much different situation. It's President Trump talking about uh, what they're calling the uh, worst attack, uh, worst American, a uh, worst attack on American uh, Jewish community in U.S. history. Pete Combs is in Pittsburgh. Pete, take us through what happened. Well, this began about 9.55 on Saturday morning during services. There are three congregations there at the Tree of Life Synagogue um, in the neighborhood called Squirrel Hill, uh, which is a very diverse neighborhood here in Pittsburgh. Um, and apparently, at right around you know, 9.55, 9, 9, you know, almost uh, 10 o'clock, there was a lot of loud noise out in the vestibule. Uh, it sounded to witnesses like a coat rack had been knocked over. Uh, and that's what the rabbi, uh, Hazan Jeffrey Myers, who was the head of one of these congregations, said. Uh, and all of a sudden it happened again, and he realized that's no coat rack. Uh, and so he told the congregants, about 15 where he was holding services, get, on, get down, get on the floor. Uh, and he was at the front of the room. The government came in through the back. There was some shouting earlier, some terrible ethnic uh, religious slurs, and then silence as this man, grim-faced, came in, turned to the people in the back of this congregation and opened fire. Of the eight people who were sitting in the back there, seven of them were killed. Myers called 911. He was on the phone with authorities for this entire 15-minute tragedy as the gunman went from one congregation to the next, from one room to another there in the synagogue, shooting at everyone he saw. Pete Combs, we heard uh, just as we were entering uh, the segment, President uh, Trump saying that if there were armed guards inside the synagogue, the police were right by and police ended up getting injured. What happened there? Yeah, there were four officers injured. So uh, law officers here say had they, uh, the, the, the responding officers not stopped with great courage, stopped the shooter at the door as he was leaving the synagogue, there would have been a much larger loss of life. He would have been out in the open and able to shoot at targets there on the street. Instead, they chased him back into the synagogue. Two officers hit in the initial gunfire. One shot in the hand, the other hit with shrapnel. Two more SWAT team officers who had responded very quickly to this scene uh, as there was a shootout on the uh, landing of the third floor, uh, one of them was shot there. They breached a door after the suspect barricaded himself in uh, a room there uh, on the third floor. They breached the door. They went in, and immediately one of the officers was hit four times uh, in both arms and legs and a grazing wound on his head. He fell. Another officer got in front of him, blocked him, uh, got between him and the suspect, continued to fire as the other officers dragged this wounded man out of that room. Uh, there was, they had a surgeon with them in SWAT gear. This guy was armored up. He was able to apply tourniquets, apply an IV, and stabilize the wounded officer and get him out of there as fast as possible. He, that wounded officer, is now being cared for. He's been in surgery all weekend. How, how did this shooter survive all of this? He was hit several times, according to authorities. He was also rushed to a hospital, a different hospital, I should add, uh, and he underwent surgery over the weekend. Robert Bowers will be arraigned today at 1.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, and it appears that it may happen from the hospital, that he may be in his hospital bed when that arraignment takes place. What do we know about him? Not a lot. I mean, honestly, uh, what we don't know is that he has any criminal record. He's been completely off law enforcement radar. He may have had some financial trouble and that was adjudicated in a civil court some time ago. What we do seem to know about him is what he's posted on social media on a site called Gab, which is popular with people whose vitriol has been noticed and eliminated from places like Facebook and Twitter. Gab is where this guy was posting apparently since January. An account in his name had a lot of anti-Jewish rhetoric and it was very hateful uh, from what I've been able to see. At one point, angry at a Jewish group bringing immigrants into the United States uh, and having them, uh, you know, these are refugees, and, and helping them settle here in the States. He called them invaders, and one of the last things he said is, the, I can't stand by and watch the slaughter of my people by these invaders. I'm going in. And that was about a couple of hours before the shooting started. McGraw. Pete Combs, two quick questions. How old is the shooter? And apparently there was an interfaith uh, prayer service last night, and it seems like all faiths are coming to the uh, help of this uh, synagogue here. 
Absolutely. So the shooter is uh, is identified as 46-year-old Robert Bowers. He lives in this area. Uh, and as far as that service, I attended that service last night. It was, at times, it was very melancholy. It was uh, defiant at times, especially when we talked about um, President Trump and, and his visit here. And it was uplifting. There was a lot of hope here. And as you said, it was a, a multi-faith vigil. There were dozens of clergy members from churches, synagogues, and mosques all over Pittsburgh. Hmm. Pete Combs, ABC News correspondent on the ground in uh, Pittsburgh. Pete, uh, thanks for checking.